Good day everyone and welcome to Adventures with Parker and welcome to our first visit of 2024 to Canada's Wonderland. Yes, we are back at my home park. I am so excited to be back here. It's kind of a cool day today, but that's usually to be expected at this point in the season. But yeah, I'm really excited to check things out and see what's new around the park. I know we have a new water slide coming. That won't be open until closer to the summer, obviously. But there's been a few other changes, like a new front gate system, a few new restaurants. Yeah, I'm just really excited to like go around and check all of it out and share what's new and see what I can see. Also, we are here on Media Day. This is my first time going to a full-fledged Media Day event. I mean, I did do the uh, Tender Twister event last year, which was super cool. But in terms of actually being able to visit the park before the season officially starts, this is my first time doing something like that. So I'm really grateful for this opportunity and um, yeah, just everything that goes along with that. So without any further ado, let the Wonderland Adventures begin. The first new change for 2024 can actually be found right outside of the front gate. The area beneath Leviathan's Hammerhead has been cleared, and new paths have been added to create a brand new security screening area. The actual process of going through security is basically the same as it was last year, but moving it forwards like this alleviates a lot of the crowding that used to happen outside of the front gates. Along with this, the roof of the front gate has received a brand new coat of paint and appears to be more green to match the wooden, forest aesthetic of the new security check structures. Alright, our first ride of the day is going to be at Leviathan and I'm joined by some friends! <laughs> things off with a ride on the Leviathan which is always a great ride to do first thing in the morning and I mean there's nothing like that first coaster of the season to get you back into I don't know just being at the park enjoying the rides it's just there's something magical about that first ride and this is no exception however <laughs> it is freezing today I used for some reason thought it'd be okay to come out here in nothing but a sweater so I think I'm gonna have to go back to the car and grab my coats because it's actually kind of snowing. There's some little flurries out, so it's cold and I felt it, but it was so fun and worth it. How was your first ride on Leviathan? Cold, but fun. Yes, I yes. love Leviathan, it's one of my favorite rides here. That was so cold. I am just so thankful it's not raining oh because I would yeah. be going home and I would be ice. So, <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Steve? It was a great first ride. Absolutely love it every time. Good way to start the season. It's like, this is interesting with the like windbreaker front. Oh, cool. <laughs> I didn't even realize that was a different material. Yeah. All right. All right, so one of the cool parts of being here today is that we get a free catered lunch here at Allswell Hall, which is a restaurant that isn't open all that often, or so it seemed that way last year. Hopefully this year is a little different. So I'm excited to see what they have for us on the menu today, but uh, we're just waiting to grab our food vouchers. We are seated for the 11 o'clock time slot and we'll, we'll, we'll talk more inside. Alrighty, so we just picked up our tasting cards. Um, so we are going to be able to sample a whole bunch of different options that are going to be offering this season at uh, different restaurants around the park. And we also get to sample some adult beverages today. Oh, 
All right, we started out with getting some items from the Grand World Eatery and the Grab and Go. So over here we have the bow tie pasta, the chickpea quinoa salad, some grilled piri piri chicken, which comes with Moroccan green pea and carrot rice, and some plantains, which comes with a uh, Rancher sauce, I want to say. It all looks so good. I'm really excited to try it all. Everything we had in that round was so good, but the Piri Piri chicken was definitely the highlight there. The plantains were a bit on the bready side, but the sauce they had on there was so good. We also get to sample some adult beverages today. So I got two ciders here. I believe this one is a blue raspberry, and this one is a peach bellini. Actually, let me check my. No, my ticket's gone. Okay, it's something like that. We'll confirm in a moment. <laughs> and then I got the uh, Leviathan Lager. Again, all three of these were good, but my favorite was the Summer Splash Bellini. But I'm always a sucker for those sweet, fruity drinks. The Blue Raz had more of a bitter taste, which was a bit off-putting at first, but once you've had a few sips and had a chance to get used to it, it was not bad at all. And the Leviathan Lager is always a classic if you need a solid craft beer. I also went up and got the vegetable green Thai curry poutine. This is something that you can get at Apre Poutinery. And I just took my first bite of it and it's really good. It combines that savory goodness that you love in poutine with just a little bit of spice. It's really nice. Next up, I got the walking taco from La Cantina. It comes with your choice of beef or chicken. I got the beef ones and it looks pretty good. It has jalapenos, pico de gallo. Um, and then some cheese sauce that they put over top of it. Then I also got one of the Persian donuts, and this is one of the items that we're going to offer for this year's Canada Day celebrations, their uh, Celebration Canada event. And it looks so cute. It's so little and very Canadian. I love it. One last round of food here because we're gonna have to clear up for the uh, next seating group soon. But I got the barbecue chicken stromboli and the campfire s'mores pudding cup. What's it called? The Campfire Icebox S'mores Parfait. And that one is from Lazy Bear Lodge. Now it looks like they're still working on this, but another new addition for this year is the Griffin's Crown, which is the VIP lounge for prestige pass holders. Now, I don't think I'll be able to get a look at the inside because I am not, in fact, a prestige pass holder. Um, they just don't really seem worth it for me personally. But um, yeah, that's what is the perks of having that pass. You get your own lounge to hang out and chill and it's located right here in the back of All's Well Hall. I do have to say, I love the name. Lunch was awesome. I am so full now, but that was so good. I think my favorite items were, I don't know, I really like the Peri Peri chicken. I think uh, that was definitely a standout and something that I would totally get again. As far as the drinks go, I really like the peach bellini. And then my favorite dessert was probably the uh, Campfire S'more Parfait. I'm always a sucker for it. Anything with chocolate and graham crackers, so <laughs> that was really good. First new change for the year is uh, the fact that the front gift shop has been expanded. Part of the old building has been torn down. They've extended it out a little bit. So it's, you know, much further this way and they changed around some of the entrances here. So that's awesome because I always felt like that store just needed to be a touch bigger. And obviously this year they addressed that issue. In a moment, we're gonna go in and see what new merch they have to offer. But yeah, very cool that they uh, decided to focus some attention on this during this off season. Okay, I love the t-shirt designs this year. Oh, same with the sweaters, those are so good. Yeah, Wonderland, good job on the merch. I'm into it. Some of these mugs are returning from last year. But good to see them again. I really appreciated those. Okay, this is neat. They have a little tree branch in the middle and I'm sure they can do some fun things with this display. 
I uh, imagine it's not done yet, but right now they have a whole bunch of squishmallows in the bottom here. Not the park related ones, but there's some general ones and uh, they're super cute. But if you are looking for the park related squishmallows, they have them here. There's Leviathan, Behemoth, The Fly, Wonder Mountain's Guardian, and of course, our eagle friend for Yukon Striker. Oh, and I love this. They have old photos and schematics up at the top here. I, I wonder if some of these were part of the 40th anniversary gift store that they had a few years back. But this is cool. I love this. I love it when parks, you know, have little homages to their history and when they share old concept art and stuff like this. I'm obsessed with that. I, I love this so much. And just in general, I love how spacious the new shop is. The old shop didn't have a lot of room to move around. This one certainly does. You're not bumping into people. It's awesome. Plus, there's some doors that lead right out to the exit. So you don't need to go back and worry about the exit gate. You can just go right out these doors and you're good to go. It's kind of like Hershey Park system and I've always been a big fan of that. So I'm really happy to see that here at Wonderland too. Of course, we have our Peanuts merch, including little Snoopy plushies. Oh, so cute. We got some more new shirt and hoodie designs. Again, everything is looking awesome this year. Alrighty, we are now making our way into the Elfenfest area, which should be interesting because a lot of work happened here over the off season. I uh, know there's a lot of big rumors swirling around that the park is working on their 2025 coaster and uh, what's been happening here might be connected with that. Either way, I'm just excited to see what's different. All right, first new change that I noticed is this new exit ramp for Thunder Run. It used to be on the other side of these buildings but now it's right here, which I like because I always thought that the old exit was so far away from the entrance. Now it's nice and close. So I'd say that's an improvement. Okay, this is where we can see the biggest changes and right away, they're already saying they are working on something big. So I think those coaster rumors might be based. And one of the biggest changes is the fact that the old Thunder Run station is no more. So for those of you who don't know, Thunder Run used to be called Blower Enzian. And it was located here where the fly is. And obviously since uh, I got moved into the mountain, that building has been used as the multi-fate space. But now it's just a big old open area. And I don't want to go any further than I'm supposed to, but we can get a good look at, well, nothing, I guess. <laughs> a lot of rubble, a lot of cement, but... Yeah, that building's gone and it is so weird. Like it's a building that, I mean, unless you're going to the multi fate space, you're not really paying much mind to it, but having it gone is, uh, you know, it, it makes a difference. It's something that you notice. Also over here, we can see work on a opening in the mountain. Um, and obviously nothing has been announced officially as to what this is. Current rumors are saying that this is going to be a uh, tunnel for the new coaster. We'll see what happens. Again, I am not here to say one way or the other until something is announced by the park. But it's so super exciting to see that prep work is already occurring for a future attraction. Now, if you want my personal opinion on what's going to happen, and again, I don't know anything. This is just speculation. But I could see this being a new Intamin launch coaster. Now, a lot of rumors were originally saying that it was going to be the blast coaster concept that was, uh, it was put out by a survey to Wonderland Pass holders last summer. It's that big wing coaster coming out of the mountain. So I think it's going to be somewhat based on that, but not exactly that. So I'm not thinking it's going to be a wing coaster. I don't think it's going to be something from BNM, but I am thinking slash manifesting <laughs> that it'll be an intimate multi launch, uh, something like Velocity Coaster at Universal's uh, Island of Adventure. I would also be okay with the back multi launch. Either way, I've always said that the next coaster Wonderland needs is a multi-launch coaster like that because we have that class sun coaster which is great but it's more of a family coaster we need something with an intense launch maybe some cool inversions maybe some low to the ground transitions and i am hoping 
that this project is going to be that. And the signs seem to be pointing towards that, so I guess we'll see what happens. first ride of the season on Yukon Striker and I mean this is always a good ride there's no such thing as a bad ride on Yukon Striker and it is running really good today despite the cold so uh, I can only imagine it's gonna be uh, getting better from here on out as we get closer to summer okay on to our next coaster which is Mindbuster which is uh, always a hit or miss ride for me I still enjoy doing it nevertheless and this off season they retract a few sections of the ride so in theory it should be smoother i uh we'll, we'll see if that's true <laughs> to be determined okay so the ride itself really good i think the uh retract sections are a lot smoother than they used to be in the past. Mind you, we were in the middle seat of the second car, which makes a big difference. If you're closer to the front and if you can get a middle seat, it, uh, it makes it for a much smoother experience. But the ride was still painful because of the weather. It is snowing and or hailing. I don't know what you call this, but it hurts. It was great, but it hurt. <laughs> we decided that we do not want to subject ourselves to uh, the pain that the weather would inflict on us. So we're actually heading over to Planet Snoopy to do Snoopy's Racing Railway because as of this year, or at least so I've read, Wonderland has released new restrictions that you need a child in order to ride. So anyone can go on it. Same with Taxi Jam. It is all fair game and we're going to take full advantage of that.
indeed able to ride Snoopy's Racing Railway. And it's such a cute ride. I'm so glad that it's uh, it's open to everyone now. How'd you guys like it? It was so fun. It's really cute for kids. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we got some fun characters out today. Peppermint Patty included. I love Peppermint Patty so much. She's probably my favorite Peanuts character. So it looks like Wonder Mountain's Guardian is closed for today. Big surprise. <laughs> But uh, there is some work going on around here. It's actually not too visible from where we are, but there was some tunnel construction below our feet because there's a maintenance tunnel that connects here into the mountain, which may or may not be part of the 2025 project. This area looks very different from the last time we saw it. The Extreme Sky Flyer, the park sky coaster, has been removed and as you can see we have this scrim and it's uh, the exact same as uh, what we saw over in Elfenfest which makes me think that this site might be part of the 2025 project as well which is something I was thinking but then kind of thought mm, maybe it's a different project maybe they're not connected but seeing this now I'm really thinking that they are so it could be a coaster that connects here goes back in that area and then connects to that tunnel by Guardian and then out on the other one by Elfenfest. I don't know, there's a lot of possibilities here and it'll be interesting to see what actually happens, but still very cool. I mean, sad that Extreme Skyfire is gone, but cool that uh, we have something to look forward to on the horizon. And here we have what used to be Backlot Cafe. When it reopens, it's going to be the Grand World Eatery. And obviously this morning we got to sample some of the items that are going to be offering here namely the Piri Piri chicken and the plantain, but it's supposed to be going to have like an around the world style menu. And I'm really excited for this. I, I have always thought that back lot could use some work. This restaurant used to be the location of Ginza Gardens, which was this Asian inspired restaurant. It had some beautiful architecture and a really nice Japanese inspired facade. But uh, when Paramount took over, they converted it to the back lot cafe and it's been the same ever since but it is about to receive a new life and a new name, which I'm happy about. I'm sure I'll be eating here quite a bit this summer. Alrighty, and that is going to do it for our first visit of the year to Canada's Wonderland. Today was a pretty good day. It was definitely a cold one. It was kind of cool being able to ride some coasters in the snow. That was a uh, new experience that I wasn't expecting to have, but you know, glad it happened. And it was cool seeing everything that was new around the park. Like I said, Moose Corn Falls is coming later this summer but even all of the other smaller projects. You know, the new restaurants, some of the uh, coats of paint that we see going on around the park. And not only that, but seeing some of the progress that the park is making towards whatever project is coming whenever. I keep saying that, like I don't wanna like say anything too definitively, but um, obviously something's coming and I am ready for it. And also big thank you to Canada's Wonderland for inviting me out today for media day. I am so like, I don't know, I'm tickled pink to be here. So honored that the park trusts me enough to have me out and be able to preview what they have to offer before the season officially starts. And this isn't something I take lightly, you know? Being on the media list is a privilege. And I'm just over the moon that Wonderland and I are able to have this kind of relationship. So um, thank you Wonderland so much. I had an awesome day. And I mean, something about being on the media list that I want to I don't know, address, point out, is that it doesn't mean that I'm going to beat around the bush if there's something that needs to be called out. 
you know, there's obviously a respectful way to give critique, and I give critique out of the love of my heart for this park. But today, I don't really have too much to say. I mean, obviously when you're coming out for these kind of preview events, you have to expect some hiccups like today. Uh, the operations were really slow. The Hemeth was only running one train. But you gotta remember, one, um, not everything's going to be completely ready to go. They still have a few weeks to go until it's actually opening day. So it's to be expected that maybe there's some things that are meant to be completed later on in the coming weeks. And two, this is really an opportunity for the park to train the new staff. So, you know, if they're a little slower loading the trains and getting them going, I mean, that's just part of the uh, part of the package. You just go in knowing that it's going to be a slower day. You know that it's not going to be the most optimal visit ever. But other than a few of those preseason hiccups, there's nothing I really have to complain about today. I just love this park so much. Um, and I'm really excited for what the future holds for this park. I think Canada's Wonderland is on the precipice of entering a new era, and I am just so happy to be along for that ride. One last thing before I go. Shout out to Emery's Ray and Steve for coming out with me today. As someone who got invited to Media Day, I was allowed to take a couple of guests and I immediately thought of them because they are such awesome content creators. I'm hoping they're on the media list next year because they deserve it so much. But um, I was really happy to uh, reach out to them and uh, spend the day with them today. So every Steve, thank you so much for making today so awesome. I, I loved hanging out with you guys. So hopefully we get to have another park day again soon. Anyways, that is going to do it for today's visit. I actually have to leave the park early because I am starting my field research today and I gotta drive to my research site. So uh, the park is open for another couple of hours, but I'm gonna head out. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more fun adventures from theme parks, attractions, and beyond, including more visits to Canada's Wonderland, please consider becoming a subscriber. You can also find me on social media to continue the conversation, see some cool photos, and stay up to date on everything I'm doing. You can find me on Instagram, threads, and Twitter at ADB Parker, and on Facebook and TikTok at Adventures with Parker. As always, big shout out to my patrons for being so freaking amazing and going that extra 1.6 kilometers to support my channel. I really appreciate you guys so much. And if you're not a Patreon member, but want to support the channel for as little as a toonie a month in exchange for some sweet perks, you can learn more by visiting patreon.com slash ADB Parker. So once again, thank you so much for joining me. And until next time, the adventures are calling. I'm so sorry. I'm a little worried. <laughs> 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 <laughs>